Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Manifo and game two of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy Tournament down at Dark Sphere. You find me on table five, facing off against Grant1082 of the Too Much Info crew. These guys are one of the local teams, a solid bunch of players, and nice guys to a man. But for the purposes of this video, and maybe the channel going forward, who knows, we're going to paint them as a dirty bunch of bastards. Rivals to the Dark Sphere home team. Crashing our gentlemanly gathering like a herd of demon hybrid bulls with scythes for legs and it's up to the gallant and very good looking Dark Sphere players to hold them back, save face and win our own tournament. The stakes are high ladies and gentlemen, the stakes are high. So this is the game uh, Insidiously Mad and I practiced uh, the last week before the tournament and I still don't know what I'm going to play into it. And as Mr Mad is sitting just to my right on table four, I turn to him and I'm like, Brozef, what am I playing in this game? And he turns and looks sagely at me and says, McMorning, duh. And so with that settled, McMorning sharpens his scalpel for another round. And Yan Lo, who nearly got excited that he was going to make an appearance, uh, sits back in the case with a grump. Let's do terrain. Uh, it's a pretty interesting board. And you just know when they're this interesting, it's going to be a nightmare to play on them. We've got impassable hardcover height a million buildings. Um, so probably most important is these uh, upraised walk bits are I think height 2. They're a stair uh, climbable, there are stairs that uh, can take you up, uh, no terrain penalty there. They've got these little height 1 hardcover railings, um, forests, you know, bit of urban planning going on here. Um, this is like a hardcover forest I think. Impassable hardcover statue things. And sweet little bridges to take us across the uh, the various raised areas. I deploy first, I believe, and deploy like this. It's super freaking tricky to fit anything anywhere. But I've got a performer. Rafkin with my little helper. Carrion Emissary down here in the pit with my little helper. Sebastian with Those Not Ours and Corpse Bloat, because I liked it so much in the first game. Zombie Chihuahua. McMorning with Moonlighting, Plastic Surgery, Decaying Aura, and another performer. Over on the other side of town where I can barely see anything, my opponent has got Philip and the Nanny right in the back corner with the Haunting Cries upgrade, a Vulture, Mortimer with My Little Helper and Corpse Bloat, Amelia Bathory, the uh, Nicodem alt with Undertaker and Maniacal Laugh, and we'll just get this picture in here because we don't see her the entire game and it'll be a shame not to. His own and pretty spectacularly converted carrion emissary with my little helper and a nurse. My plan for this game, once I've conga lined everybody off the bridges, is to secure my position on this uh, uh, central walkway, churn out canine remains to go scattering off to the flanks and prevent any attempts at claim jump, and then wait for the waves of undeath to hit me, hold out and accuse them. I seriously considered putting frame for murder on McMorning and running him right at a... Uh, Amelia. Shutting down big time summoners in the, the very early game is a, you know, su a successful strategy and it's worked well for me against Nicodem in the past and McMorning is a threat that pretty much everyone's got to deal with um, but Nicodem is just so hard to kill when he's surrounded by his uh, undead things which he will be. I know my opponent's a pretty good player and I just think it's too risky. So we're going to try to do it this way. I've got my performers at the ready to be able to lure my guys back as I'm somewhat anticipating my opponent summoning some rotten bells and trying to lure me into unfavorable clutches as I experienced previously. And I'm hoping the performers will be able to counter that. Let's see how it went. Turn one. I think I win initiative and get my opponent to go. The Necropunk I forgot to mention in the uh, deployment uh, bit of the video goes and drops two scheme markers. Sebastian moves up, cuts out his spleen and summons a dog. Mortimer shows Sebastian how it's done, cuts out two spleens and uh, also digs up a uh, corpse. My Chihuahua moves out and poisons both Sebastian and McMorning. My opponent spots an opportunity and goes with the carrion emissary, double walking up and putting down his shards to block McMorning in my deployment zone. Good move. And uh, yeah, I'm now suspicious about who the frame for murder target is because emissaries tend not to want to be the spearhead of the attack if they're trying to live. I get my own emissary up and put down some markers. I've got my dog running out uh, off to the flank. I'm going to be trying to, to, you know, 
cover this flank of the table because I reckon there's, uh, there's going to be undead things hopping around and my suspicions are rewarded when a vulture flies up and drops a corpse marker just here and uh, uses its eyes and ears thing so Amelia can summon, summon from it. I hear the sounds of maniacal laughter coming from behind the building and some uh, z uh, zombies rise from the corpses. Rafkin just runs forward up to the top of the stairs and removes Sebastian's poison to heal him up his damage. I love doing that. Makes good use of that zero action on the first turn. Zombies shuffle. My performer works, uh, walks up and lures my chihuahua out of the way, which enables McMorning to activate poison push over here, walk and charge the emissary. Doing some hearty damage and then I injection uh, Sebastian up to be within induction range of the emissary. And now I can pretty much ignore it and let it die of poison. And my hands will be clean. Turn two, my hand was terrible so I had to soul stone. And at least I got some twelves. Honestly, my, uh, my lucky black deck has been in a bit of a slump so far. But I can't complain too much because I win the initiative. It was pretty big and there might have been some soul stoning on both sides uh, because at the end of last turn he'd moved his nurse up as far as she could to be in range to paralyze McMorning next turn and I wasn't having that so I went with my emissary leaping from the balcony setting up my shards here to block line of sight there's a tiny gap between the, uh, the model and the base here which uh, leaves only this kind of little line and I put my base right up against uh, the other emissaries and against this terrain totally cutting her off from Dougie I've also popped both my little helpers this turn, so it's not going to be easy for him to focus down my emissary. Looks like the nurse goes and heals up the emissary and just walks forward a little bit, waiting for my shards to disappear. Not wanting to see all my hard work from the last turn undone, McMorlin goes in again, smashing the emissary back to his last wound with some poison, and then I think I injection the performer forward to drop a scheme marker with an eye to setting up a seduction in future turns. Looks like the vulture's flown back to safety and a punk zombie and a hanged have been summoned. The hanged then drifts forward and halves McMorney's wounds and prevents him from healing for the rest of the game. Oh man, that, that really sucks. Where are you, Chiaki? At the end of the turn, things look like this. The necropunk and the Philip have been generating lots of cards. The punk zombie's moved into the uh, terrain feature here. But there's another hanged coming up to play with Rowan Nilsson. Sebastian summoned another dog and the emissary has died, uh, creating another dog over here for me. There's zombies everywhere because my shards have uh, given me one and the My Little Helper on the emissary's zombie occurred. Or however you phrase that sentence. I sort of recall there being a zombie here at some point that my opponent managed to get, uh, get in there. And I poisoned it with the Chihuahua so that when it died I'd also get another dog which just then run down the stairs. Nicodem had summoned a Necropunk from the corpse marker that he placed here on the first turn. I think it had then run over here. And this turn has dropped a scheme marker just under here and over here. And my dog from the first turn has run over to block it. And so at this point I've scored one for show of force. Going to turn three, I'd wish for a better hand than that. But getting lucky and winning the initiative again, I go with the Camion Emissary. He sends the Hanged back to Oblivion, drops his shards just to prevent the zombie from doing much. And they're not really expecting to find himself with a flush with one AP. I shoot the nurse and kill her. I've been debating leaving her to try to get accusation, but I figure she'll go next and uh, try to paralyze McMorning, who now won't heal from it. And that'll be all kinds of unhappy. So I, uh, I do her in and he reveals frame for murder. Drat. It wasn't on the emissary and it's always on the nurse. Why, why do I fall for these things? Mortimer, recognising that uh, compared to Sebastian, he's just a useless waste of space, manages to dig up a load of corpses and then get himself killed <laughs> to uh, give out a uh, zombie. It might have been that the Necropunk dropped some scheme markers, which Philip and Nanny activated and used and then shot uh, Mortimer, something like that. I can't quite remember. But anyway, I thought that was pretty nifty. So thanks to taking two shots from the Hanged and his own poison, I think McWarning is at this point on one wound and within Sebastian's aura. So Sebastian heroically leaps from the parapet and maybe summons a dog from st stuff that's around here and summons a dog from something's corpse which then allows McMorning to activate without dying and knowing he's not long for this world because uh, he'll die at the end of the turn just goes in and attacks the hanged managing to get one or two licks in not doing much damage but getting some poison out um, uh, before failing a terror test. 
In the meantime, my performers picked up a head. It might have been from the hang that moved here. Um, I was in range to put it down up here. And the dog, Sebastian Summoned, has climbed up to the top. As it looks like the enemy's starting to pressure this flank pretty hard. Rafkin tries to finish off the hang but can't. And then at the end of the turn, my dogs have run around here to try to engage the zombie. Uh, my performer's just lurking around. I think I'm, I bulls up some stuff, actually, and have to use her to drag things back into position. We managed to survive the punk zombie's attentions, but we've got another necropunk making its way up. I think this is a head marker. Presumably one of my guys died dropping it, but I can't remember what. The necropunk over in this corner leaps, drops another marker, and then runs to stand by my dog, preventing me from getting away. To block them, I decided to just, you know, give him the points this turn and kill the necropunk with the hound. There's no head, so I'm pretty sure it died of poison at the end of the turn. Honestly, uh, canine remains are great at taking out necropunks. They just need one moderate hit to kill them. Finally, sadly, McMorning succumbs to his own poison and dies, and I'm so glad I didn't put a uh, frame for murder on him. We go into turn four. I accuse the punk zombie and manage to get... Uh, my shard zombie in, uh, con in engaging him as well after it pops out at the end of the last turn just to try to make it stick and the zombie fails to kill my dog which was much appreciated my performer and my other canine remains uh, work together and manage to get back over here claiming um, a head that was uh, over here, I think it was the nurse's head up on the walkway we managed to clear out the hanged and the punk zombie although the necropunk still standing and managed to drop a scheme marker uh, but it wasn't enough I think the emissary's double walked up here just to try to make sure he's safe and uh, in case anything goes wrong I'm still scoring um, show of force. Sebastian's just down here below, probably trying to uh, summon more dogs from the corpse markers. Turn 5, a pretty shocking hand but it doesn't really need to be that special. We take down the necropunk before it can get away and collect its head. My opponent, um, the punk zombie just runs away from my guys, this time slipping through, collecting something else's head. I get a dog up to accuse the necropunk, but it just jumps away and removes it. And there we go guys, that's the end of the game. Final scores, Amelia claimed two heads for Headhunter. One point for Claim Jump and two points for Frame for Murder. Curse that nurse. McMorning got three points for Headhunter, one point for Accusation and three points for Show of Force, making this game 7-5 to the home team. Really good game that, really enjoyed it. So many dogs and zombies and punks everywhere. Some really fun shenanigans like uh, you know protecting McMorning from that uh, from that nurse, playing the poison game with the emissary, and uh, you know getting lots of dogs out of things, dying of poison. Frickin' hanged man, they are they're bullshit. McMorning super doesn't like them, and I'm gonna definitely gonna have to see if I can pick some up for my reses because they hurt. Loved this trick with Mortimer. I'm not sure I understand how he managed it. He would have found a bone to get one of the markers. Perhaps he would have gone fast, but uh, he would have needed another AP. Um, Philip and Nanny, so I think he cut, oh, he cut out his spleen to get the other one. And then Philip and the Nanny shot him to make a zombie and also drop a corpse. That was nicely done. So yeah, brilliant game. Really enjoyed that. Many thanks to my opponent. He was a great guy. And I'm sure we'll need to get a rematch soon. And I'll catch you on the third and final game of this tournament. Take care.